confluence of romance, influence of coincidence, three couples united by deity farsighted. Again as a simple trip, free as all you men seeking. The glow of an aura, the Kaylee interest. The keeper of the soul of Estolia is the only son of Zacharias given the privilege and the burden of keeping the soul of another. On the seventh day, like all other couples, the marriage of the future keeper and his Kaylee is confirmed by the Spirit. It is the eighth day that is so critical to the couple and to the nation. The day after their marriage is ratified, he is confirmed as the newest keeper, and during the ceremony, his Kaylee yields up her soul to him, just as he yielded his to her when they consummated their union. This is when each Estolian gives a particle of their soul and places it within the safekeeping of the couple. Together these two are the key to the stability of Estolia and thus the happiness of her citizens. Kytheros, add you for keepers. Max leaned back against a pillow, thinking about the exquisite woman who had stunned him when he saw her walking down the aisle. His gut-level reaction had been an overwhelming triumph, followed by insecurity. Why would a woman with so much going for her bother with him? He was not attractive, with more of his scalp showing through his receding hairline than he liked, and she was supermodel beautiful. He sighed heavily. You have it bad, Nico said. Max grinned as he rolled onto his side to look at Nico. Yes, I do. She is beautiful. As beautiful as Rhea, Nico concurred. Not that Lyra knows it, though. True. Max shuddered at the memory of her family's cruelty. Her family have called her a hideous gargoyle her whole life, can you imagine? It is 18 days before your birthday, Nico reminded him. I wonder why Uncle Zeke wants you to be around her. You should know. You will take over as keeper if your blessing is correct the day before my birthday. Coincidence, Nico said. I think not. He was silent for a time before adding. For some men, the temptation is more than their character can handle. But for other men, it can be resisted, and sometimes the test of character is the critical point. Max, I would say that you are fully capable of holding back until it is the right time. Perhaps Uncle Zeke just wants to be sure you do consummate your relationship on the appropriate day. I feel a great peace, Nico, to know that you are the one who will keep the soul of Estolia. I could not do it, Max said. He reflected, not for the first time, on how blessed ordinary Estolians were when compared to the burdens borne by the leading class. He himself benefited from everything they did to keep him happy, healthy, and safe. And he was asked to contribute very little in return. He served one year as an acolyte, doing his service jobs without complaint. The recompense offered was a scholarship that paid for four years at Harvard. He did work for the Zakarian Corporation, making sure the interests of Estolia were always supported but he traveled in luxury and knew from his travels and studies that the average Estolian lived very well compared to people in other nations. He sighed in contentment. It is wonderful to be Estolian. Easy enough for you to say. You have found your Kaylee. You have only to wait and she will be yours. Nico sounded frustrated. I have yet to see a single woman who even sparks my imagination. You will find her, cousin, I am certain of it. When you do find her, you will feel like you have been hit by a flock of willowals. I am looking forward to being hit by a flock of birds, even flying overhead if that is what it takes. Nico said, a smile in his voice, his good humor restored. Both men grinned at the messy image Nico's interpretation called up. So, Max asked after a pause. What is going on with Zeb? Nico got to his feet and started to pull off the clothing from the day. Imagine how it feels to be Zeb. Son of the former king and brother of the current king, and of the last resort. His blessing at eighteen says that he will never experience an aura, never place his soul in the keeping of his wife. If his blessing is taken literally, he will agree to marry her before he has even met her. Now Zeb is surrounded by the promise of three separate unions all going right, while he knows he will have to willingly forego the blessings promised so freely to others by deity. Nico stopped speaking and shook his head sadly. In the silence, Max thought about the prophecy made nearly eight years before Zeb was born, saying that the third son of Queen Lelaine would be a catalyst of change and save the planet. 
He couldn't imagine what it would be like to be born under the shadow of a prophecy like that. Nico continued. When he looks at Zera, he sees himself, except Zer now has more than Zeb can ever expect to have. As an Amidor, he has the name of a son of Zacharias. His first name even begins with Zed. In addition, Zia, while not being in the same wealth bracket as Zeb, is still affluent. Zer has also been granted that which Zeb must forego, a mate confirmed by deity through an aura. Zeb has years before he will be given the most superficial of connections, much less than you or I will have. This has brought home to him all that he will be asked to sacrifice for Estolia. Zeb sees Zir as undeserving of the many blessings he will so effortlessly receive. Max suddenly felt ashamed of his own good fortune in finding Lyre. Zeb would never enjoy the same blessings. He vowed at once to be true to the promise of Zacharias and resist temptation until the time was right. Not only for himself, but for Zeb, who deserved the blessings Max would reap, but would be denied them in the fulfillment of his prophesied role. You will find a lovely Canadian beauty, though, Max said, who will love you to distraction and fulfill your birth blessing.